Shalom, shalom, chabarim, shalom. This is Yadon. So is Hasatan, is Satan, is Satan an angel? Is Satan really, really, really an angel? I know transformeth himself into an angel. He transformed. But what is an angel? Is Satan an angel or a principle? Let's say it as a, a principle factor, right? We're still kind of reasoning on this, whether just a principle or is it a principle in the sense of a factor? Like he's a factor, like a factor in an equation, right? To what they say, balance the equation, a factor in the equation. So we're reasoning on this. And as we're reasoning on this and have some notes on this, we're going into this right here, here, here. You know, this uh, short, called like a dagger video, like a short dagger video. Just zoom in on this one question here. Is Satan or Satan as they call him, an angel or a principle, a principal factor in the equation? What sayest thou? Right? What sayest ye? What says ye, y'all? <laughs> what says y'all? You know what I mean? What have you heard? Better, 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 what have you heard? What have you heard said? Right? In other words, what have you heard say? Right? In other words, what sort of hearsay? Right? Because some of the hearsay, not all, not all, not all, but some of the hearsay is basically just heresy. You know, in other words, it's, it's just off. It's just hearsay. You heard somebody say, but but what do you know? Right? But what, what says you? Do you say he's an angel? Now, we've heard that, yes, Satan is an angel. You've heard that he's a fallen angel. Now, we're going to look at the canonical scriptures, right? Let's start with the canonical scriptures because a lot of bad ideas came out because people were just looking at just the Old Testament and New Testament and other, we could say, testaments or scripts or scribes, you know, was um, not prescribed, you know, for the, for, the, for, for the people, you know, so they could not subscribe, you know, to those scribes, they can see what was written in those writings. So there's there's uh, apocryphal books, the whole 400 years, there's a 400 year testimony in the apocryphal books between Malachi, the last book of the what they call the Old Testament and Matthew, the first book of what they call the New Testament. But the question is Satan an angel. Let's define terms. Cause a lot of things have gotten lost in translation or, you know, a lot of things got lost in translation. We heard some people say, oh, the Bible deceived them. Or they were deceived. Or we as people, even black people, have been deceived by the Bible. Really, a book? No, I would say it's the so-called white man, right? Or the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant counterfeit Christianity that deceived, you know, that deceived, right, us. And that deceived themselves, right? But now we will deceive ourselves if now we have the, um, the power of the exercise of our proactive will to study to show ourselves approved and to seek for the truth so we can find it for ourselves. So we got to look at what our preconceived notions right, were, whether they came by the church, a, a religious, you know, religious um, relative, <laughs> you know, whether we had a religious relative. And I just laughed at that right there because it, 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 it's a good phrase. You know, we have like religious relatives, you know, my mama, my papa, my auntie, the person who raised me, you know, somebody I'm related to. Or that is, um, we say, somewhat relatable, you know, somewhat relatable to, you know, somewhat relatable, somewhat relatable to um, us. Hold on for a moment right here. Just just something I did on the side. My arm just brushed up against something. You know, my arm just brushed up against something. Okay, I don't want to give, I sent somebody a text and, you know, one of those little emojis, my arm as I was writing down religious relative, you know, just touched up on it and it sent an emoji I, I, I didn't intend to send. So anyway, Satan, right? Satan, an angel. What is an angel? See, because our spookism around angel, you know, people think of wings, you know, from the so-called Sumerian, the Babylonian thing, and a little bit in the Kometiu Egypt thing, you know, now comes down to it's like wings or like a feminine, a feminine um, so-called men or feminine. I say a feminine because they're supposed to be male, but some of the pictures, you know, in um, Christianity and everything, you know, y'all know, if you look up angels, the black and white, the etchings and all of that, such and such. So that also forms a wrong impression in our mind. In fact, it's almost like it creates, uh, 
you know, like the whole thing about idolatry or graven image, because these images now, when you say the word, the first thing comes in your mind, you think about the image that you've seen. You know what I mean? Whether in, you know, whether in a movie, whether in um, a, a writing, a book, a picture, or in some religious teaching or so forth and so on on TV or, you know what I'm saying? People get these images, right? And so when you say these things, they're going to answer based on the familiarity, based on the programming or the pre-programming, how we've been, you know, previous, our, our priors, you know, our prior acquaintance. But the term angel simply simply means a messenger I've gone through this before on the podcast and the torah teaching and the the minor sabbatical studies you know we go into the detail and if you just look up the term angel right where it appears in the in the in the bible and you look up the term messenger and you'll see that is is both are from the malak right the malak root the malak root and we have lak lake right like the scent basically it's one scent so an angel is like a messenger but in the bible sometimes these terms get confounded you know by based on the western gentile the greco-roman tradition everything is coming down to from the latin the latin is a script the english letters is latin so that when we write in the english letters it's latin so the whole culture of the western gentile translating something from the east from the ethio um etho shemitic or the afro shemitic afro asiatic as some call it but from the afro shemitic from the afro we said african the ancient hebrew and the african to put it in that context it's, it's a whole different mindset right it's a whole different mindset right there and this is where these errors creep in where we get these kind of um images of angels right that are totally contrary to what is even in the plain reading of the king james version of the bible so we have here on the screen right here is a quick screen saver right here you know just just for this particular vlog this particular video the hebrew words translated as satan slash devil now from the hebrew perspective this term diablos is a coin of greek term right it basically brings out one of the senses of the satan the, the the satan but what is who is the satan or what is the satan right now some say shaitan right it's not pointed like that but it could be you know we understand that in the hebrew the scene and the sheen right but basically it's satan right we have also the term um shed right shed right we have the term um 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 sha'ir sha'ir right or sha'ar sha'ar sha'ir Sha'ir, like hairy ones, right? These are some of the terms that in the translation become demons. So a lot is confused between the D, the double Ds, you know, the devil and demon, you know, um, phraseology, right? And where it actually comes from. So what the confusion is, is that the Old Testament, as it's called, primarily is Hebrew or Ethio Shemitic, you know, in linguistic. But the translation into the English incorporates sometimes the Greek terms like Diablos, sometimes the Latin terms like Daemon, right? And in a few cases, a transliteration from the Hebrew like Satan. So because the Europeans, or not the Europeans in that sense, but because um, the so-called Christians, Western Gentile, let me put it, I won't put it accurately because I want to put like race is not always on everything, but it does play a role, right, in everything, right? But it's not the main thing, right? When I said not the main thing, what I'm saying here, because I want ones to get this out of order and everything. What we're trying to explain is that if we go straight from, straight, if we go straight from the Hebrew, Right, we'll find these terms like Satan, right, Shed, Shadim, Sa'ir, Sa'ir. You know, we we'll find these terms, but in English, they brought out to us sometimes from the Greek. So when you see devils in the Old Testament, devils, that's a mistranslate, that's a miscontextualization. Do you know what I mean by miscontextualization? In other words, it could be considered a mistranslation both a mistranslation and a miscontextualization. If we go through those words, one, you know, word by word, verse by verse, you'll see it for yourself, right? We're not gonna go through it right here. We wanna keep this as a short, kind of a dagger video, you know, to this, this false idea that's so prevalent, right? And we heard ones arguing about Satan the angel, and just a hear love to, to Captain Cesario, guy, SUPK, one worse, 
you know, the one West Israelite, you know, that camp, you could say over there, because in this back and forth with Sarnetta, just brief, you know, he said something, he said, um, what do you mean by the angel? The angel, he kept zooming in on the angel Satan. I, I started to laugh to myself a little bit. I said, wow, I, you know, because we heard him say other things, but he's very, you know, he's very, um, seem to be on point with what he's saying based on what the Bible, the point of reference is saying. And that's very good, you know, as a teacher or communicator or debater. Now, we don't agree with, of course, you know, certain things that he say. We say he's off on that, but he didn't go into that here. What he went into is something that we agree with because he was questioning this terminology of the angel Satan, right? The angel Satan. So here, let's first of all go into the verses, is Satan an angel? Right? Is Satan an angel? Let's go over here. Let's go to to um, my sword, my sword, my sword. Right? So now here we got a couple of, um, let's go to angel, Satan, angel. Now there's four verses in the Bible. You see that, that up there? There's four verses in the Bible. The King James Bible. See, we're going into the King James Bible. The reason why? We're going to the King James Bible because that's the Bible for the 400 years. Right? That's where the majority of ideas and concepts, right, concerning different religious, theological things have come through, right, especially for us here in this Western Hemisphere in America and the Caribbean, right? Now, of course, others have gone into other knowledge, like we're going into the Hebrew, but that's not so familiar with everybody. Ones are just getting up on that. Right? So let's go from low degrees to high degrees right here. So first things first, we only have four verses in the Old and New Testament. Now we know there's apocryphal books, right? Other, other scriptures that say early Christians and maybe early Yehudi and early Israelites reference. We're not going to that firstly and foremostly. But this is the basic level of the discussion, the basic level of the reasoning, and maybe even a basic level of the argument. Is Satan or Satan an angel? Is he really an angel or is he something else? <laughs> right? Or oh, you know what I mean? Um um is he something else? In fact, um I'm thinking about that as an alternative title right there. I just had to write that down in my notes. Right? So we have four verses. Right? Satan and angel. Right? Now notice these four verses. Right? Satan and angel. Now a lot of people like to go to Job, right? You know a lot of people like to go to Job? They like to go to Job, we talk about Satan and Job, and, and Job, right? But there it says the sons of God. It says the sons of God present themselves and Satan, Satan, right, with them. It doesn't say the angels, right? The sons of God, the children of God. Mm -hmm. Now we have that phraseology in Old and New Testament, right? Are the children of God angels? Are they angels? Right? For example, if I have a kingdom, right, and I have children, right, and I have messengers, or is everyone a mess? I might send my son or my daughter to deliver a message, and in that case, they are my messenger, or you can call them, right, in the counterfeit Christianity KJV sense, you might want to call them an angel. But basically, if I'm speaking the Hebrew, I'm calling them a messenger. So all that angle, angelos, and all of that, all that stuff is when you're in the matrix of the Greco, the Greco Latin, the Greco Roman. That's the Greco Roman matrix that's just come out of her. That's the Babylon matrix right there. When the, when revelations come out of her, my people come out of that limitation of your mindset. Recognize, yeah, that's where we were. Like you know, like we were, you know, there ain't nothing. They said below hell, right? So we was at rock bottom in the belly of the beast. But we have to come. It, in our psychology, our psycho-spiritual consciousness state, we believe those things. But then we got to find out that those things came from other things, so to speak. You know what I mean? Like right here, there's only four verses in the Bible, right? Old Testament and New Testament, we have the name Satan and angel in the same verse. Let's look at all four of them quickly here. Zechariah 3 and 1. And he showed me Yehoshua, Joshua, the high priest, the Kohen Gadol, standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. So so let's, let's put this in the picture right here. So we have Joshua, the high priest. He is standing before in the face of. That means in the face of Panim. Panim in the face of, right? In the face of the Malak Yahweh. Now we have the Malaki Yahweh. The angel of Jehovah is different 
right, than the so-called Satan, than the Satan as people conceive of Satan, because it says, and, and Satan was standing at his right hand. So the question here is, was Satan standing at the right hand of Joshua, right, the high priest, or was Satan standing at the right hand of the angel of the Lord? But the fact is that people will confuse this. You know, we can go through the Hebrew. The Hebrew can help us to clarify it since it was translated from there, right? To do what? Standing at the right hand to resist him, right? We go on in the verse. And Yahweh and Jehovah said to Satan. Now, notice when it says the angel of the Lord, it's referring to the Lord, right? Or Yahweh. So when Yahweh said, this is the Malak Yahweh, because we have the, the, the angel of Jehovah speaking, right, as Jehovah, right, in many cases throughout the Brit Hadat, uh, I mean, throughout the, the Old Testament, the Old, I will say the New Testament there in the Hebrew, but the Brit Hayashana, right, the Old Testament, Hebrew Bible. But here in Zechariah it says, And the Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuked thee, O Satan, right, even the Lord that have chosen Jerusalem, rebuke thee. He's been rebuked, right? What does it mean to, to rebuke, right? Ga'ar, ga'ar. Ga'ar is to rebuke, to reprove. In a sense, it can mean to corrupt, right? Rebuke to chide, right? To corrupt, to rebuke, to reprove. Almost like to correct, to rebuke, to reprove. The ga'ar, right? And he said that, that O oh, Satan, even Yahuwah, Jehovah, that have chosen Jerusalem, rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Out of the what? The fire. Speaking of Yehoshua, Kohen Gadol, right? So we have we have the scene right here, right? We have the scene right here. Now many interpret that the Satan, right, was standing where at the right hand of the Kohen Gadol or Yehoshua, right? And therefore, where it says the Lord Yahweh rebuked him, it's the Malaak of Yahweh, right, speaking. So it is he who be who he be the Almighty. We say the Spirit, the truth, speaking through that messenger, right? That messenger of he who be who he be. Doesn't name him. Doesn't name him as as any name, which means that he wasn't those familiar named angels that we are familiar with. He wasn't that angel. He's an exclusive angel. In fact, in Hebrew and 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 the Torah based um, teaching. Right, it's very interesting. We'll, we'll get into that right there, you know. But the angel, right, the angel Jehovah speaks as Jehovah, right? We even have him in the temptation, you know. You know, ones will talk about the temptation, well, not temptation. I look at it as a, it sort of was that in that sense, the whole thing about Abraham and, and the binding of Isaac. But it says, now Yahoshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before Hamalak, stood before the angel, right? And he answered and spake. To those that stood before him, who is talking about the angel, take away the filthy garments from him, and to him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity, which is like uh, what the Avon, Avon, Awon, Awain, perversity, like moral corruption, right? That condition, that moral corruption, perversity, moral, right? Like moral perversity, moral corruption, right? That iniquity, translator says, to pass from thee. I will clothe thee with a change of raiment. So we're getting a change of raiment, and I said, right, right, let them set a fear mitre upon his head. So they set a fear mitre upon his head, and clothed him with garments, and the Malaak Yahuwah stood by, right, he stood by, and the Malaak of Yahuwah protested to Yehoshua. Now he protested to Yehoshua, ood, 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 he repeats, goes round. It's almost like to testify, like to be a witness, to say again and again and again. You hear, you hear, you hear? To be a witness, to testify, to invoke in that sense, right? To protest, affirm solemnly, a sense of a warning, right? To Yehoshua saying, Thus saith Yahuwah Tzabaot, he who be who he be of hosts of armies, if thou wilt walk in my ways, and if thou wilt keep my, my charge, my commission, then thou shalt also judge my house, Baiti, you know, my house, and shall also keep my courts, and I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. Right? So right here, bring it to verse 8. Hear now, Yehoshua, Kohen Gadol, thou and thy fellows that sit before thee. 
right? For they are men wondered at. For behold, I will bring forth my servant the branch, right? I will bring forth my servant the branch or the tzemach, the tzemach. Now, not to get into this even further, but you can clearly see right there that Satan is not called an angel. See, because what and who and what is Satan? Now, Satan appears both in the Hebrew as a noun, right? Like somebody, and as a verb. So if I say like somebody is lying, right? Oh, that's a, that's a lie. I could say that's a lie. Is a lie a person, right? A lying, right? Lying. That's an act. You're doing this, right? But then if I say this person's a liar, right? That means that the person now embodies what this principle or this factor is. You see what I'm saying? What this factor is. But what's clear here is that Satan is not called an angel. The only one who's called a messenger. Oh, give thanks. The word malaak. Just to clear this up. H4397 Malaak, messenger. You see it right there, BDB, Browns, Drivers, Briggs, messenger, a representative, a messenger in the Bible sense, angel, and then they talk about theophanic, angel. This is now getting into white Anglo-Saxon, Protestant, and other kind of spiritual eschatological speculation. Some of it might be correct, some of it not. We're not going there. The origin, they say, from an unused root, we can find the root in the is Ethiopic, meaning to what? Dispatch. So you somebody is dispatched as a deputy, right? As a deputy, like as a representative. We see as a noun, it's masculine. So that makes us question all these kind of feminine, you know, these feminine, um, very questionable, you know, European um, Christian stuff, right? Paintings and etchings. The Strong Concordance says from an unused root, Ethiosemitic, right? Meaning to dispatch as a deputy, a messenger, specifically, specifically of Hilehim, of Ha'el, of the Almighty Power. That is an angel, but notice what it also says. Also a prophet, a priest, a teacher. So this messenger, this Satan, does not always have to be, as people imagine it, some kind of like um, so-called supernatural being. When I say above nature, you know, it could be flesh and, uh, flesh and blood. Right? It could be a flesh and blood person. And this is how the term Satan or Satan is used Hebraically and even in the scripture. It's used not only for so-called the, the more like um, kind of spiritual, like the, the quote angel so-called sense. No. But it's also used for a person. So a person can be a Satan. Right? But as we say, the real Satan or Satan is the adversarial mind. Right, the adversarial mind. Let's go into the word Satan. Satan. It's an adversary, right? An adversary. Right? So if we go into this verse right here and says and an the adversary and an adversary standing at his right hand. That's the sense right there. Not spooking it out, get into speculations, encroaching into things of angelology or whatever other ology, right, there may be. But the simplicity of it is an adversary, one who withstands. An adversary, right? Now, in general, a personal or national adversary. So that means for the Israelites, another nation that wanted to do us harm, right, or people were considered to be a Satan, a Satan, or Satans, right? Were, were considered to be a, a, a enemy or enemies. See, this is the plain, simple, direct, right? This is like the right and accurate way of overstanding it and understanding it and even come to a good you know understanding of it all these other things are as um ones and ones are calling it more nowadays all these other things are real pseudo right all these other things are real pseudo right and they really have you know no real relevance Right to the truth of the narrative or what's being said and once you begin to include those things even in your thinking You begin to pervert that that's where the iniquity come in remember what's about Joshua you, you know, what I mean that's where the iniquity yeah, 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 that's where the iniquity comes in it, That's where the twist right the corruption right the confusion right and then people start to really you know begin to believe these things as fact right but the fact of the matter is we're talking about an adversary. So it could be a person, right? The adversary can be a person,
But if a person is an adversary, it's because something deeper is adversarial. Their thought, their thinking, their feeling, their emotion. So now we're getting into psycho spiritual. Now we're getting into the spiritual warfare level of it, the real level of it, right? But on the outer level, it could be a personal adversary. So somebody who is adverse to me or who's who's an opposition to me, even in the plain simple of the Hebrew, technically an op. We say an opponent. This this person is an op. This they're an opponent. They are Satan. They are Satans. That's that's the simple meaning in the Hebrew. No spookism. Right? Whether it's personal or natural. Now, here's the second definition where we get superhuman adversary, Satan. The real Satan, Hebraically, that superhuman adversary is in the consciousness. It's in the, it's in the so-called heart and mind. Right? It's in the soul and the spirit. Right? It's in our thought and our thinking. This is why the more proper way of bringing this out, right? Even a Hebrew metaphysical kind of interpretation of this is the adversarial mind. I heard one sister one time say, you know, and heal up Sensi, because <laughs> that's who it was, the sister named Sensi. She said, she said, um, bad mind is worse than obia. Mm. Mm -hmm. So called obia, what they would call witchcraft, but bad mind is worse than that. And I even said to her, well, Wow, that was what an interesting statement when she said that. I said, when I thought about it, I said, actually, that's what, that's what, that's what it is, right? The so-called, when well, people call it Obian, let's not get into Obian, other people's spiritualities and everything else like that, right? Or maybe some of yours, whatever, how that be. But whatever is adversarial, bad mind, it's a certain type of mentality, it's a certain type of mind state. Because a noun doesn't always only refer to a person, right? A noun doesn't always refer to a person. Right? If you say somebody got a bad mind, right? Oh, that's bad. You bad. You know when we say you bad. You know how we call sometimes, even if it's an adjective, we can call somebody you bad. Right? Right? Not you a bad person, but you bad. Right? Because maybe we don't even think of you as a person. You just bad. Right? This is the sense of Satan. Right? This is the sense. Now masculine. Right? You see what I said? Strong's bringing out right here. An opponent. An op. An op is a Satan. An op is a Satan, especially with the article prefix, ha satan, the op, the opposition, right? The opposition, whether it is physical, physically, or it is metaphysically, right? It's above the physical, the carbon organics level, and it's in the spirit, it's in our conscience, in our mind, it's in our thinking, right? Satan, they say, they say, as the arch enemy of good. Hmm. I'll put question marks around that. My question marks around that. Now, here's how it is brought out in the King James Version of the Bible as adversary, Satan, and withstand. When we're looking up the word, right? And this is a noun. Remember, this is a noun masculine, right? But the noun comes from the verb, right? So we have satan, satana, sat, setana, setana, satana, the H7853, right? The verb. Right, the BDB Brown Drivers Briggs says to be or to act as an adversary, resist, oppose. So I'm speaking in Hebrew. I said, he, 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 he was my adversary. He was resisting me. He was opposing me. If I, you know, I can use the the verb satan. That's what I'm trying to share with you. This is this is the the verb sense of it. So I'm not even just saying that he was the Satan or this supernatural being, but he was my enemy. He was my opposition. He was he was opposed, right? He was opposed to my good, right? He was opposed to my good. He was opposed to something that was beneficial to me. Or he was opposed to me and I think of myself as good, right? It might turn out that he was opposed to me and maybe I was bad, you know what I'm saying? But, but it's a contextual thing, right? Primitive root, it's a verb, right? Here's where we get it now. Let's get it, let's get it, let's get it. A verb, the H7853, the verb, satan, as a verb, not as a noun. It's a primitive, an ancient root. What does it mean? To attack. So, my one who's attacker, right? Figuratively, it's an accuser. In the figure of speech, right? In the second of the Hebrew, two truths, it's an accuser. So, no accuse. Therefore, they be, they become an adversary. Therefore, they, they be, they, they resist, right? They resist it. Therefore, they are an opponent. This is the prime sense of it in the Hebrew, without all the, the spookism of counterfeit Christianity or religious isms, schisms, right? So when we go to Mark, 
right mark chapter 1 verse 13 and he was there in the wilderness 40 days and tempted of satan now if you go to matthew matthew in the original hebrew context of matthew it's the same satan but there they translate diablos they go to the coin of greek diabolin right to throw a cross or to slander they use the term slander and liar and then they confuse people then they go to the latin diamond diamond where they get the word term demon right which is a type of a spirit basically demon in the latin is a spirit right but they're not giving you the hebrew sense they're mixing it up they're mixing it up in their translation right and then when people now start to go through the translation and and believe and become idolaters of the bible bibliolaters and say oh just the king james version we're not gonna go no further than this they they fall into those errors those traps tempted of satan right and was with right the wild beasts so yeshua robeno adoneno I and I, Rabbi, the Rabbi of Rabbis, our Black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMoshiach, right, was in the wilderness for how many days? Forty days. And he was tempted of the Satan. Now notice right here, it says Satanas in the Greek, the G4567, Satanas. How do they define Satanas? See, they always add like the A-S or the S behind names in the Greek. So really the Satan, the Satana, right? They say it as an adversary, one who opposes another in purpose or act. The name is given. Notice what it says, the name is given. Don't mean that this name is really appropriate to, but the name is given. You know, people may give you a name, right? They don't mean it's your name, but they give you a name. They, they name call you, right? The name given to the prince of evil spirits, the inveterate enemy of Elohim. Uh, uh, adversary, adversary, adversary of Elohim and of Christ. He incites apostasy from, he incites apostasy, of, apostasy means falling away from Elohim and to lacking, to sin, to fukuri, uckery, circumventing men by his wiles. The worshippers of the idols are said to be under the Satan control. Now people are thinking of a man or a person. If you start to look at this in a mind state, a spiritual mind state, See, this is why we talk about free will, right? Free will. See, this whole free will reasoning and the blame game. People say, the devil made me do it, right? Now, some people are questioning free will and say, well, the God of the Bible don't give you free will. So then they can say, God made me do it. They're looking for excuses, right? Think about that. Excuses. Maybe they're under his adversarial mind state. So, peradventure, Elohim gives them, you know, repentance so they can, you know, um, recover themselves, right, out of the sneer. Right, of Hasatan by his demons. Now they go into the demons. Demons really means like spirits, so called. Right? Deamon is. Right? He is able to take possession of men and inflict them with diseases. This is actually true, but not true in the way that people have been made to be like Eve. Right? Through his mind state. Like, you know, like if you keep going in a certain way of thinking, you ever been around certain people and you notice they have an influence on you? Right? I know a lot of you say, nobody influences me. Okay, I, I get what you're saying. But the reality is sometimes we all influence each other. Sometimes for better or sometimes for worse. So it's almost like they say, um, um, uh, what it says, um, um, evil company. What's it? Evil company corrupt good manners. All right? You ever heard of that one before right there? Evil company. Right, or bad company, evil company, corrupt good manners. So it's like when you be in something for a long time, you, 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 you know, familiarity breeds content. You know, I say content. Right, if you're so familiar with it, you're content with it, and you, you may become contemptuous of it, but in the sense of, we're talking about this mind state, this way of thinking. You know what I mean? You're exposing yourself. That's why some people, people say, oh, I got to get out of this, you know, because they recognize that because I've been around this, around certain people, around certain situations, you know, I'm becoming more like, in a sense, quote, possessed by it, right? Anybody real out there? Anybody real out there that really has, you know, just understands how this is, the principles, I thought we say, is Satan, right, an angel or a principle, a principal factor, or is, is, is he, Right, he and she, right, and they, right, is he and she and they actually something else, right? By Elohim's assistance, he is overcome. Then they talk about the return of Christ, so they're getting to theological, like a, a Satan like man. Look at that, a Satan like man. So, like, we could have a God like man. Now, this corresponding right here of Aramaic origin, right? So, we have Satan, 
right? And we have the basic same, you notice right here, it goes to the same thing right here. So they're taking us around and around, but notice when they go here, of Hebrew, now we get to the Hebrew origin where we started out, where I started out with you. So, so we said adversary. Would it have been easier to use the term adversary, but they leave in certain Hebrew terms, right, in certain places, because to them they say, well, these Hebrew terms are more important than other Hebrew terms. You know, it's not one time in the, in the, in the King James Version of the Bible, at least not that we've seen, where they have Elohim, right? You know, they don't have Elohim, right, or Elo, Elohai, or whatever. You notice that? But they'll put Satan there, right? You know, we can say an attribute, right or the adversarial mind and its uh accessories accomplices but what does it say right here it says he was with the wild beast and the angels ministered to him so there's a separation between satan and the angels so people have to take care and be careful about what they say because words shape reality because the words that we say and that we believe if we really believe it a certain level of reality is shaped for us by it whether it is truly true but it becomes um, operative it becomes our reality right because we are thinking that way you know as a you know as a man thinketh in his heart you know what I mean so is he right now here's where the point that a lot of people say oh I got you right here if you go to first second Corinthians chapter 11 verse 14 right they feel this is gonna blow the argument out the water no it's not it actually affirms everything we said remember we went in so-called chronological order right from the first reference in the KJV Bible Right? And the KJV, we didn't say the Hebrew Bible, because we know that the first reference is actually earlier on, but that's looking from a Hebrew perspective. That's a whole different perspective. We can follow up on that as well, because some actually confuse the angel of the Lord with Satan. The reason why we did this right here, and we actually did this right here, right, like this, because we want to share with you this right here, so we can pick up on this. Right? Right? So the Satan of the Bible. Now here they're confusing the action right, with this so-called person, the personality of Satan. Because they're misunderstanding the essence of what Satan means in the Hebrew sense. Right? If you notice, they, they have basically the same sense. Notice it goes on and says, i.e. the devil. That is to say the devil. That means they say the devil. So what it is, it's almost like a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant hypnotism. It's hypnotism. They've hypnotized us by these meanings, but as we actually follow up and study them for ourselves, we find that the meanings that they give us actually have other meanings, right? The meanings that they give us are not accurate, right? According to the, the, primary, the primary sources, right? The primary source is the Hebrew, right? And even to say for the New Testament, the primary source in part is the Koine Greek, Right? Most people just say it's just the Greek, but we'll, you know, we'll concede to that right now. Right? We'll concede to the point. What we have in the Numbers narrative is actually the same angel of the Lord, right? Who is acting the part of, right, the adversary. So, in a sense, we could say that Jehovah himself, through his messenger, was adverse and opposed, right, was opposed, right, to um, Balaam, Balaam, right, Balaam, and to Hadad the Edomite, right, and, and, well, Hadad the Edomite, we're looking at that verse, we're looking at this verse right, because Hadad the Edomite is a different, I think it's a different context, in fact, let's just go right here for a moment, let's just go through the next verses, because ones want to maintain this lie that Satan is an angel, but can't show me any verse where it says that he is an angel. Even this verse in 2 Corinthians 11 and 14 says, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed. Transformers more than meets the eyes. You remember that back in the days? Some of you are old enough to remember that? You know, the original? <laughs> Transformers, right? Transformed into an angel of light. Mm, what does this mean? So remember, Satan is not, he is not, you know, like, you know, we can use another example. We we'll, we'll don't want to get into those levels. Then people might want to so-called flag it for that level, whatever. But there's a lot of transformation going on. But then people argue, well, that's not really what you are, but that's what you want to be, blah, blah, blah. But this is the same with Satan in this sense, right? He transforms into something he's not as an angel of light, right? Let's go right here. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's go over. Okay, yeah, we want to go into the verse right here. 
right, to put into context, right, right, um, he says right here, verse 13, for such, he's speaking about such and such and such, right, for such, he says, are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christos or apostles of Moshiach, apostles of HaMoshiach, the Messiah, so here, Rabbi Shaul, a.k.a. the apostle to the Gentiles, the apostle Paulos, is saying that the people and the type of people, he's talking men and people, these pseudo-apostles, these false apostles, these deceitful workers, right, they try to transform themselves, right, into, right, the apostles of Moshiach, but they are not, they are not apostle Moshiach. Are we talking about people up in the sky somewhere? So think about this for a moment again. When we go back to Job, the sons of God. In fact, this is New Testament here. Berit Kadasha are not the, the, the true Nazarenes, right? Later to be called Christianoi. Are they not the children of God, right? If they are acceptable to, to, to Hailehim and Moshicho, to, to the Almighty Power and His Messiah? Yeah, right? So we have sons of God, you know, when it says, you know, that he gives them the power to become the sons of God, John chapter 1, just look in John chapter 1, I think it's around verse 13 or 12, 13, roughly around right there, right, might not have the exact verse, but it's right there, I just pointed that out there as a point of reference, right, that those, you know, who have faith in the Moshiach, right, they, they have that authority, right, to be the sons of B'nai Ha'ilahim, the B'nai Elohim, right, sons of God. So we have in the Job narrative, right, that the sons of God. So we're talking about uh, spooky, like, so-called angels, like like they make-believe. Are we talking about make-believe angels? No. We're talking about messengers, because they're supposed to be messengers of the good news. The message of salvation. The message of Yeshua, Yeshua, oh, the victory, right? But these ones here are false apostles. And they are deceitful workers, right? They transform themselves, Right? That, that means that they take on a pretense. They, they, they're pretenders. They're pretending right? Right? to be the apostles of Moshiach. And Rabbi Shaul, a.k.a. the apostle Paulos, is calling them out. That's why a lot of people don't like Paul. <laughs> and no marvel, he goes on to say, for Satan himself, who is there to say their daddy, right? you are of you know, you know, your father, Satan. You're of that mind state, right? You wasn't begotten, right, of the higher mind, the holy mind, the set-apart consciousness, the Christ consciousness mind, right? But one's from below, not from above, not from what is above, but from what, what's below, right? The wisdom that comes from below is in them. The wisdom that comes from below, right, is their mama, right? But for us, the wisdom, right, that comes from above, right, as James talks about, James brings that out. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Moshiach. And no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. But he's not really an angel. He is transformed. Notice how they transform themselves? He transformed himself. Right? Because both have a measure of will. Right? They have a measure of will or what you might want to call free will. Right? But not free will like you're free until you're full. Will. Yeah. Not like, well, well, not like free will, like you can do something beyond your power. You see what I'm saying? It's like if somebody, like I'm generous. Say if I'm a generous person and people, my brethren, my friends, I, I got something and I, I give it to them. But they ask me for something I don't have. I'm willing to give them, but I'm not able to give them. So do I not have free will? Yes, I have free will, but, but that's beyond my, my capacity. Right? So let's talk about capacity. We're going to talk about real science, real Hebrew science, real world science. That's beyond capacity. So if somebody says, give me $1,000, but I only have available $100. What's the most I can give them? I will have to go somewhere else and get that to give it to them, right, if that's even possible. But if they say, I need it right now, I only got $100 now, you, you know, I'll give you the $100, right? And, and they say, well, 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 you don't got no free will. Right? I, I just express my will. My free will is to free up that $100. But I can't free up $1,000 because maybe at that time, $1,000 will be on my capacity. You know, wait around a while, maybe. Oh, no, no, I need it now. Okay, well, that's the way it is. Right? So, 
speaking of these false apostles, you speak of men and people, deceitful workers who transform them th themselves right into apostles. And the word apostle is interesting too, called apostles is a delegate. Look at that, a messenger, one sent forth with orders. Basically, an apostle is another way of saying a messenger or what you will call and what they call, right, in counterfeit Christianity, an angel, right, in, in pseudo in pseudo religionisms, right, because the script talks about true religion and says, therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers, those who serve him, those who serve that 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 ill canudo, right, consciousness, you know also be transformed as ministers of righteousness right that means transform what's transform let's bring out the word transform right here transformer meta my schismatizo meta schismatizo right to change the figure of to change the figure of right to disguise see to transfigure to disguise themselves figuratively to apply by accommodation to transfer transform self so it has a good sense but here's clearly the the what they would call the bad sense or the evil sense since people wanted to know about the knowledge of good and evil well here we're getting it we're really getting it right whose end right their end shall be according to their works boom right there boom right there's a boom right there lastly but not least see the fourth of the verses in the bible King James Version, right? Satan and angels. Now, maybe there's other Bibles. Of course, we know there's the Hebrew and there's the Koine Greek. Yeah, but we're going from low degrees to high degrees. Here, Revelation 12 and 9 says, And the great dragon, the great dragon, as it says in translation, right, was cast out. That old serpent called Diabolos and Satan. So we have two particular names. Look at the name um, Diabolos. Diabolos, prone to slander, slanderous falsely accusing right metaphorically applied to a man do you see that right there metaphorically it's a metaphor for a man metaphorically applied to a man who by opposing the cause of high him the almighty power may be said to act the part of the devil hasatan acting the part of the adversary the adversarial mind the satanic mind state or to side with him or to be on his side a traducer you know, that's an old such and such. But notice, it says compare with the Hebrew right here, compare with Satan. Right? But notice, this is bringing out Diabolo to throw across, to send over. Right? This is the root of Diabolos. Diabolo. My right? dia, across, balin, to throw. Right? To throw across, to send across, to defame. You know, like, you, you know how this goes on. You know, people call it the dozens. The dozens is kind of a level of playing the devil. Right? Or the devil's advocate in our world. Right? That's that's what that would be like. Right? You know, you name call or you roasting somebody. You may take something that's actually true and you exaggerating it. You 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 kinda you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, on that level. But in plain and simple language it's basically slander. Right? So here in the Chazon Yohanan, right, that was written to, you know, an audience of mixed linguistics. Right? There was an audience of mixed linguistics and whatever kind of met metaphorical, whether the Hebrew mythos that they were familiar with or others, this is being brought out like this, right? To kind of like catch all. And Satan, right? Satan, who deceiveth the whole world. It's the adversarial mind, right? Through men and people that acts through men and people, men and women, males and female, men and people. That's why they say Satan, he, yeah, just giving that, you know, authority, you know, like to, to the male, that responsibility. But there's also Satan, she, right? Certain type of feelings, emotions that, that, that corrupt our soul, boom. Which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, the earthly plane, right? And his angels, notice this, and his messengers, that's what it's saying. And his messengers were cast out with him. You ever get a, like a, a thought? A thought come to you and say, oh my gosh, where did that thought come from? And it's not really the thought that, you know, in other words, that, that you was thinking, right? And you recognize the thought is not a good thought. It's an evil thought. It's a, probably maybe a downright wicked thought, right? And you wonder, like, where that thought came from? It came in your head, your mind, but it's not really the thought that you was thinking, right? That is... That is like a touchstone of the, you know, of the adversarial mind, right? That's a touchstone of the adversarial mind, of the so-called Satan, right? The so-called Satan, right? The Satanic, 
right? That's a touchstone right there on the satanic mind, the satanic mentality, right? And you can go along with it. This is where will comes in. You can go along with it, right? Or be captive. You might already be in a captive state, you know, because they say possession is nine-tenths of the law, right? And as we point out in that Second Timothy verse, right? Second Timothy, many people in the free will video, check out the free will in the Bible video. We sort of bring that out right there, right? That talking about people have a measure. It all depends, right? And they might get caught up in the satanic mind because they were rolling. Like you're rolling for clicks so long, you act just like them. And you even recognize other people say you changed, right? You're more like these ones, right? You know, they say, um, 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 evil company corrupt good manners you see what i'm saying how that works right there that's like part of the possession matrix right you know familiarity you know nine tenths of the law that's the possession so some people right they are more inclined right they have an inclination and yet as we say in the hebrew yet to the rara they have an inclination to the to the evil to the bad mind because they are exposed to it. They are almost at one with it. They are comfortable with it. All their homies got the same kind of mind state. I think if we honest, we all have been in situations like that. That we we can think for ourselves, yes, but many times we think based on the peer pressure, based on those who are around us. You know what we got exposed to, what we got used to, what we say we know. We know this. We don't know the opposite. So if we get that sort of thought in our head, we go along with the, the satanic mind. That's the real world. What it means about possession. No little spooky boogeyman like that. In fact, the reality, right, is actually is actually far worse than the fiction. The fiction just have us go around and around in a merry-go-round. Right? And we really can't even help ourselves even when we want to help ourselves because we don't have the proper tools because we have been significantly fooled. Right? We don't have the proper tools because we have been extremely fooled. Right? Hoodwinked and bamboozled, so to speak. Now, there's another level of this right here, but we actually sought to have this video a little shorter, you know, than it is right here. But be it as it is, let's go right here. We're going to look at Satan the noun. Let's look at Satan the noun. Right? There's 23 verses. Sleeker. Satan the, yeah, the, the noun. But well, not the verb. The noun right here. This is the verse that we talked about where we think that that previous me, we understand what they're saying right there. Right? That's what we say, well, Satan was the obedient angel. No. The angel of the Lord, right, is always the angel of the Lord. Right? Other angels, some angels are given names, even even from the very beginning. Well, well, from the yeah, from what we have in the scripture, right in the Bible, some angels have been given names, right? It's like some, you know, in some of the Hebrew senses, it's like the angel, and others, it's like an angel or angels, right? Now, people assume that this one right here was um, the one they call Satan, right, or Satan. Although it's not overtly written in text in Numbers 22, 22. And here you see where it says, and Elohim's anger. Now you have to keep that word in mind. Anger, af. Notice what the af is. The af is the nostrils, the nose, right? It's not the face, but the nose is on the face. That's why in Hebrew, it's sometimes contextually speaking, not the letter of the law, right? But the spirit, right? Figuratively. Anger. But here in the Hebrew, this brings out the anger. Right? And why does nose bring out anger in the Hebrew? Because you ever get angry? You ever conscious enough when you're angry to see how your breathing changes? Some people get so angry that they're almost ready to faint. Right? They're almost ready to faint. And, the, and what's happening, that's what people say, say to people getting angry. Breathe. Breathe. Just breathe. No, 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 no. Don't take a breath. Right? They be hyperventilating so much that it's almost like they're about to pass out. Right? Same thing with anger. Rapid breathing. Right? Rapid breathing and passion. Right? That's why breath control is really spirituality if you think about it. Because if you can control your breath and, and your feelings and emotion might get angry, but as you control your breathing, like you manage and moderate your breathing, you can think clearer. But sometimes if you don't, you go with that feeling, your breath, because notice that the breath is getting rapid. But most people are not conscious of that. Right? It's almost as though some entity so to speak, right? Spiritually speaking, in the thought, the feelings, emotion is entering into them and they're losing control, so to speak. Or you can get angry because it's your intention to get angry. You know what I mean? But the connection of anger with the nose, the nostrils, right? And that's on the face, right? Referring to the person, right? From the rapid breathing, 
right? The rapid breathing. So here it's so to say that Elohim's anger, right? That anger is, is a different breath than the cool breath, you could say, was kindled because, was what kindled? Get to the word kindled. Hara, 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 was hot. So one's, one's breath, one's breathing, right, is hot, right? One's breathing glow is also the glow to blaze, right, in a figurative sense, right? Because, speaking of Balaam, he went, Balaam went, because he was not told to go, only if they asked him to go, but he went because he was after that filthy lucre. Right, he he was he was greedy for gain. Right, and the Malaak Yahuwah, the angel Jehovah, stood in the way for an adversary. Right, stood in the way for a Satan. Right, now in the Hebrew, this is not. Let's just go right here in the Hebrew. How how does this appear in the Hebrew? Right, it says right here. It says Why Yachar Af, Why Yachar Af, and hot was you could say the nose, the breathing. The breath, we could say the spirit in that sense, Elohim of the Almighty Power. Ki halake, holek, ki holek, right? Because holek, because um, Blaam went. Ki holek, who? Wayayita yatse, wayita yatse, right? Malaak, right? Wayita yatse, malaak. So here we have the the angel Yatzab, right, standing, setting, taking up a, a position, like the Nitzab, Natzab, Nitzab, took up a position. Like, you know, like in the military, they say, hold your position, because he's trotting, so he took up a position, almost like an ambush. Wayita Yatzab, Malaaka Yahuwah, the angel of Jehovah, Ba Derek, right, in the Derek, Derek is the way, Derek is the way, Ba Derek, Le Satan. Right? It's not saying that the angel was Satan, but the angel's purpose was to oppose. Oppose um, um, a, a preacher, a pastor for hire, in a sense. You know, this Bilaam. I won't say he was a false prophet because the words of prophecy from Yahuwah was put into his mouth. He knew of Yahuwah, he knew of Jehovah, because he's a Medeanite and everything. But he's like preachers and pastors, and people who know the truth, you know, preachers and... It's like when, when Christ talked about the scribes and the Pharisees and how they have the keys of the kingdom and don't enter in. In a sense, I'm not saying that Bilaam has all the keys, but he know Yahweh, hey. That's what, that's what kind of resists him. So really, it's the Almighty here that's resisting him. Not some mythological being that they want to call Satan. It says Lissatan. Lissatan is a verbal form right here. Lissatan, right? Lissatan, right? You know, Lissatan, right? Lissatan is getting to this root right here. Satan. To be, to act as an adversary. But, but the being is the Malaak, right? Is the angel. But Satan is never, notice that Satan is never explicitly called an angel in the scripts. It's like later on people might, might see it that way. But obviously from the beginning it didn't be that way. Right? Right? For an adversary. Right? For an adversary. Oh, get back to the Hebrew right here. For an adversary. Let's go down here to the Tanakh. Right? The Hebrew right here. For an adversary. Right? Where are we right here in the verse? Right? This is the word right here. Lissatan, right? Lissat. Okay, let's go back down here. Give me a moment, brothers and sisters. It scrolled all the way up. Let's get the verse right here in the Hebrew, right? Oh, let's go through it like this right here because then we can pull up the. Yeah, so we have Lissatan. Now, see, see, that's why we didn't go to that one right there. All right, let's go out of this one more time. One more time. Let's go to Tanakh. And so it's these two words, right? Le Satan to oppose, almost like to Satan him, to oppose Lau, Lau, Le Satan Lau, to oppose him, right? To oppose him. And then it says that he was riding, you know, upon, you know, um, Ahono, his, 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 his donkey, you know, so forth and so on. But that's not the part we're looking at. Le Satan Lau, Le Satan to, to Satan him. To Satan who to oppose him, right? To oppose him, right? Now he was riding upon his ass with his two servants, blah, 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 right? And then it goes on to say, and then he saw the Malaak of Yahuwah, right? Standing in his way. So the act of opposing him or even attacking, remember we went through the word attack? The act of attacking him, 
was a sataning him, right? So it's not, it's speaking about a verb, an action, an action that any of us in a situation could do, right? He's standing, right, in the way, right? Baderek, in the derek. Remember the way, the truth, and the life. Now, based on what we've studied, the angel of Jehovah, right, is that pre-incarnate word of he who be who he be, right? The angel, the messenger, right? The pre-incarnate one, right? This is why, you know, the real connection with Robeno Yeshua, right, what he was saying and what even the gospel is saying, like in the beginning was the word, the word was with Elohim. Right? And Elohim, he communicates to men and people according to the scripture in a few different ways. Right? One, either a direct, right, a direct revelation, which is very rare, as in the case of Abraham. Right? Other times in a dream, you know, Beholem, Beholem, in a Holem, a dream. Right? And other times through the angel of his face, that's known as the angel of his presence, who is none other than the, the pre incarnate word. Right, that has become right the son has been born as a son, right? That son, the word, right? That word, the word of Hilahim. Right? This is our perspective. We can reason on this. But even right here in the narrative, we can clearly see that it's the angel of Jehovah, right? And people who try to make the angel of Jehovah in this instance, like Satan, obviously have more Balaam. They're defending Balaam, right? Because the angel did this, you know correctly right the angel did this correctly you know he was saying you know like um to him you know why you smote the the donkey she was trying to save you if the donkey didn't save you i would have you know i would have slaughtered you right like if you kept if you kept moving forward but that donkey right the donkey saved right that's why it says right here and when the ass saw the donkey and then then then, then the lord opened the mouth of the ass you go all the way down here right then when his eyes were open that's why when that word, remember that word then was later on was put into his mouth. So instead of cursing the Bnei Yisrael, he had to bless them. And even told his, his handler or the one who had hired him, Balak, that listen, you don't understand. You know, like it's only he's saying that I want to curse them, right? But I can't. You don't, don't you understand? I almost got deaded on by the angel of the presence, by the angel of Yahuwah. I almost was deaded on. So yeah, I wanted to, but I couldn't, right? He, he was willing, right? But he didn't have the capacity or maybe for his own life, you know, he was going to push it. You know what I'm saying? Right there, 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 right? So that's why I said right here, and the angel of Yahuwah said to him, wherefore hast thou smitten thine ass these three times, right? Because Jehovah the Almighty cares about his creation, right? From the animals on up, right? Behold, I went out to withstand thee. Look, look at it. He went out to do what? To withstand thee. So to withstand somebody, to sat on them, to oppose them, to be an adversary. Because your way, right? Because your way is perverse before me. Because, you know, the, the way is perverse. What he was going to do, you know, try to use his spirituality, his knowledge, right? To, 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 to curse, you know, John people. You know what I mean? To curse the Almighty's people. Right? So you see this right here where it says withstand. Right, you see this right here. If you go to the first Sam, you you see right here where it says, "Less in the battle, he be an adversary to us." You see that right there? Less in the battle, he be an adversary to us. This is First Samuel twenty nine. Who is who is speaking right here? Right, it's the princes of the Philistines. Right, they're saying that he would be an adversary. Right, so is that saying as we're speaking of David and the Israelites? Is David and the Israelites Satan? No, they are adversary. So in a sense, it's like deuces. Right, they are Satan's to us, and in their heads, we are adversaries or Satan's to them. Right, but who is right? Just like the angel of Jehovah was right, so may we be. Right, and David said, "What have I to do with you, you your sons of Zeruah? My right? Zeruiah, my right? or Zeruiah?" right interesting right um that ye that y'all should this day be adversaries to me he's saying that all of y'all have become like satans to me right was he saying that they literally were this mythological thing called satan that people want to make believe nowadays no he's not saying that at all he's not saying that at all he's saying right here he says what well, he says you know Satan hayong that y'all have come to oppose me today, 
right, that y'all have come to oppose me today. You know, like, why are your ops to me? You're my ops. Shall there any man be put to death this day in Israel? So anybody? For do not I know that I am this day king over Israel? Like, are you going to kill people? You're, but I'm king. What's going on? Why are you opposing me? You know, why are your ops to me? Right? So, right? Not talking about no mythological being in that sense. But we're talking about real world. Just on this earthly plane. Because remember, he was cast down to this earthly plane. But, that, but he speaks of what? An angel? Right? Or, or, or this principle, this fact, this factor. And I connect that with that fall, the fall factor. But now, Yahuwah Elohai, my power, has given me rest on every side. So that there is neither adversary, a Satan, somebody to attack or oppose, or evil, Ra-Ra, 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 right? The Ra-Ra, Ra-Ra, right? ra -ra. Right, it's ra. It's a different, you know, different letters have different enunciations in the Hebrew, so they're different words. Evil, bad, a current, pega, pega, happening. There's nothing that's happening. Like, like we're at a, we reach a time of peace right here, right? Then we see where Jehovah stirred up an adversary to Solomon. Who was this? Hadad, the Edomite. So was Edomite the Satan from mythology or what? No, he was an adversary, right? He was the king seed in Edom. Right, in Edom, right? And Elohim stirred up another adversary, Rezin, right? Rezin, the son of Eliada, right? Which fled from his lord, Hadad the Ezer, right? King of Zobah, Zobah, right? And then it goes on to say, he was an adversary. He attacked Yisrael all the days of Shlomo beside the mischief that Hadad did. And he abhorred, he abhorred Yisrael. Remember we told the Edomites? We were told not to abhor them. Right? So we'd be higher than them. But he abhorred Yisrael and he reigned over Syria. Right? So even the whole connection of the, um, um, what's it called again? The, um, what do they call them again um, in Egypt? Um, the Hyksos. Right? When we talk about the, the Edomites. Because the Hyksos, as they left, they are said by credible archaeology and, and, and references to have gone to Syria. Right? But anyway, Satan stood up against Yisrael. He stood up. Right? Ahmad rose up and provoked David to number Israel. Are we talking about a person? Is there a conversation between a person going on here? Let's see if there's, there's a conversation. And David said to Joab, no, this thing came up into David's mind. You know what I'm saying? This thing came up into David's mind. That was against what was commanded to be done. If you go through even the other areas of scripture, right, it talks about the same incident, but it gives another kind of contextualization to it. Now, this is what we get to right here with Job. Now, the rest of the passages, it's interesting about Satan. The most passages about Satan, right, is actually in the book of Job, right? It's in the book of Job. Both we can say overtly, right, definitely a lot of them overtly, right? But then we have covertly into the narrative. Set thou a wicked man over him and let Satan stand at his right hand. Right? And then notice over here what happened to Yehoshua. So here we just done a full cipher here, brothers and sisters. So Satan, Satan, right? Based on what we have gone through in the scripture, is not an angel in that sense. Satan has angels. Satan, Satan is like that bad mind, right? That adversarial mind. Right, it's a, it's a consciousness. Right, it's it's a principle, like a factor. It's a, it's a factor in the equation of the knowledge of good and evil. Basically, Satan is a factor, right, in the equation, right, of the knowledge of good and evil. You get it? So what they say, beware what you ask for. Right. Well, that this is this is just to complete, you know, this reasonment right here. So what you think, brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers? Shalom, Chabarim. Shalom. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit up, you know, hit up also Rastafari Israelites. Hopefully we can open up the platform as we're going forward the new year, you know, more and have some reasonments, you know, on this. You know what I mean? And among peers, yeah, some debates. Shalom, Chabarim. Shalom. This is Yadin. And I and I approve this message.